Kia ora everybody and welcome to Civilization 5. Today I'm taking you through a Civ guide and today we're looking at Babylon. Babylon is without a doubt one of the strongest Civs in the game for a science victory. Alongside probably Korea, I think these two are the top two to watch out for. And anybody who's played with or against Babylon will know that. Uh, in this video I'm going to take you through some of the unique things that Babylon has or has to offer that make it a really strong scientific civilization. I'm also going to take you through how to approach social policies, things like religion, ideology, build order, how to handle your unique unit and buildings, and finally I'm going to share some tips for uh, pitfalls to avoid when you're playing as Babylon, because I see a lot of players make very similar, repetitive, but also actually quite sensible mistakes. That These are things that you would think would be a good idea in theory, but when it comes down to practice, actually you're tripping yourself up. So, let's jump into the video. For starters, Babylon has ingenuity. Generation of great scientists is increased by 50%, and you receive a free great scientist at writing. This is really big. Like, I really actually can't understate how important this is, okay? And there are two very separate benefits as well. Let's focus on the first one. Generation of great scientists is increased by 50%. That's going to uh, be maintained throughout the game and stack with other bonuses. So when you get the heroic epic, for example, that increases great person uh, generation by 25%, that's stacking with this unique innate ability of Babylon's where great scientists are generated at a 50% greater pace. Uh, now, the way that great person generation works as well, just so you know, is it's separate within cities. So one city can be working on it and get a great scientist, and all the rest of the cities aren't reset. So you can be earning your great scientists throughout multiple cities. That's important, and we may come back to that later. The second part of Babylon, <laughs> that's just the first part. The second part is that you receive a great scientist at writing. And this leads to a very important and distinct strategy with Babylon. Rush writing. Rush the great scientist, and then use the great scientist to build the academy tile improvement, rather than expanding or bulbing the scientist to provide an immediate research boost, okay? That's really important. With your first free great scientist, and likely most of your great scientists through most of the early and mid game, again we'll cover that more a little later, uh, will want to be turned into academies, that's the tile improvement, and then as we learned in our uh, citizen management tutorials, you're going to want to go into the city and make sure that that tile is being worked. In terms of which tiles to place it on, um, I would recommend you stay away from tiles where uh, rivers are um, adjacent to the tile because those will be likely your food bearing tiles. Obviously you don't want to knock out any um, any important tiles that you're, you're planning on using for say uh, other tile improvements like luxury resource improvements or um, expending other great people. Uh, by and large I think you want to target either a two food or a two production tile and slam it down on there. Okay, great. Now, let's move on and talk uh, quickly about Babylon's unique uh, unit and unique building. So the unique unit is the bowman. The bowman uh, replaces the archer in the early game. Uh, it's better, it's certainly better than the archer, um, but to be honest, it provides um, only really a little bit of extra defense against early attacks. Um, it, it is important, like it definitely outclasses the early archer. Um, and I would say that their power level is roughly in between the archer and the composite bowman in terms of strength. Uh, you generally probably won't be using these as an early rush strategy, but rather you'll be using them to uh, have a much greater defense against barbarians, uh, a much better uh, offense against barbarian encampments, and uh, likely also a defense against any early aggressors. Those will be your key uses for Babylon's uh, unique bowman. Uh, outside of those use cases, you're probably not going to use the bowman a great deal, but I definitely recommend picking a couple up and potentially picking archery up uh, after you get writing. Okay, your build order is probably going to be rush to writing, get the free great scientist, and then pick up a couple of things. And I'd recommend picking up archery and, and giving the uh, unique Babylonian bowman a chance, because it is a good unit for uh, removing barbs and defending against early aggression. 
Babylon's unique building are the walls of Babylon. Uh, these, of course, replace uh, the first walls, the standard walls. They cost 65 production, provide 6 defense, and have 100 hit points. The walls of Babylon increase damage output of the city's ranged attack and increase the city's defense. It's a good building. Uh, the walls of Babylon are a good building. They really are. Um, it, you know, it improves city strength. That de um, City strength is also determined by a number of other things, like the era that the server's in, whether the city is on a hill, its, it's population, uh, is there a unit inside the building, and what other defensive buildings are there. So walls aren't the only option. But for context, normal walls add around 50 HP, and I believe the walls of Babylon add 100, uh, and then supplementary buildings are adding 25 on top of that. So certainly your cities will be healthier with these walls. However, if you are spawning in a location, Location where there aren't really any immediate threats from other sieves, I would recommend you delay building these walls as long as you can. Don't neglect the war stick, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying leave yourself vulnerable, because these walls are a key part of Babylon's early turtle defense strategy, right? You can see a synergy here. You can definitely see a synergy between the defensive, slightly stronger bowmen, and these defensive walls of Babylon. These, uh, both the unit and the walls of Babylon are designed to keep you safe in the early game because you should be absolutely prioritizing rushing down scientific technologies. Not just writing, but also pushing your way through to get education right the way through to plastics. That's going to be your number one priority throughout the game. So it's nice to have these defensive buildings. The only reason I say to delay it is because actually, if you're not being attacked, it doesn't provide any real bonus to you. There are other things that you should be building, including units, to be fair. Uh, but also buildings within your civilization, workers, fatal improvements, trade routes, so on and so forth. There are lots of things you should be prioritizing, so I'm going to recommend you delay the construction of the walls of Babylon uh, as long as you safely can. And that will of course depend on where you're spawning, the difficulty level you're, level you're playing on, so on and so forth. Speaking of difficulty level, in the last part of this video now, the 7 minute point, I want to talk about some of the common pitfalls of Babylon, uh, some things that trip people up, and some of these are uh, innately linked with difficulty level, because depending on your difficulty that you're playing on, uh, depends on your build order and a couple of other things. Okay, so uh, the main way that difficulty plays out will be with the Great Library. Okay, so with Babylon, you, you absolutely rush writing so you can get your free great scientists, put that down the academy as fast as you can and earn the science, right? When you rush writing, you also unlock library, so you're going to get your first scientific building quickly as well. And you should prioritize building that to try and get your national college online as quickly as possible, which requires libraries in every settlement. Therefore, you don't want to settle, uh, you don't want to expand out too quickly and have a bunch of cities where you can't get libraries in them, okay? So that's my first pitfall that I want to see you avoid with Babylon, is don't spread out too fast. You probably want to be playing a small, concentrated empire of three to four cities max by turn 100, but if you haven't got your national college online, I would recommend sitting at one, at the most two cities before you do that. Uh, next up, and sort of along those lines, is the Great Library. On the two higher difficulty levels, on, on things like Immortal and Deity, it's impossible in most games to build the Great Library. On difficulties below that, it, it can be a challenge, but still definitely doable. Uh, anything below sort of difficulty level three or four, it, uh, you can probably pull it off, okay? So that's sort of the spectrum that we're looking at. If you're around five or six, it may be a challenge. Below that, you can probably do it. Above that, it's going to be difficult. The Great Library, uh, so yeah, so so on, those, on the two high difficulty levels, the Great Library is going to be impossible. However, on the earlier ones, you can do it. Your free early Great Scientists Academy will give you more of an early science lead than the Great Library will to whichever Civ built it though. So I wouldn't stress about it, okay? If you're playing a harder difficulty, ignore the Great Library. If you're playing an earlier one, yeah, sure, you can go for it. Uh, next pitfall I see is not micromanaging your specialists. Specialists are huge with uh, Babylon, particularly because down the cultural tree, you definitely want to probably just go tradition and then rationalism, picking up something else in between if you have to, like one into liberty or one into commerce. Uh, micromanage your specialists, they're going to provide you a lot of science, particularly once you have rationalism, and it's really important that you have as many locked in place as possible.
The last uh, main pitfall I'd like to talk about with Babylon is the use of great scientists, okay? So with your first one, you definitely want an academy. I would recommend you continue to build academies, spread them out throughout your cities as well, remembering that great scientist generation doesn't just pick one city, it's happening in all of them. So definitely spread your academies around, uh, but do focus on one or two cities, uh, build them close to the city earlier in the game to try and protect them from uh, barbarians, because if this thing gets pillaged, you're really, really unlucky and basically you've lost the whole point of Babylon, okay? So it's really important to protect these academies. Uh, as you move through the game, you will, however, want to start using uh, the other great scientist ability, that is the immediate tech boost rather than building the academy uh, tile improvement. Uh, generally, once you reach plastics, it's a good idea to use the great scientist for a boost because you'll get more science out of them by just immediately expending them rather than building a, a slow burning, slow churning tile improvement. Uh, but there can be some use cases earlier in the game if you really need to rush a certain technology, by all means, go for it. Uh, other than that, I think that concludes my guide today of Babylon, the ultimate science power in Civilization V, really up there with rivaling Korea. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like rating and subscribe down below. Uh, I'm more than happy to cover more tips on a really uh, quite complicated Civ like Babylon where there's lots of strategy involved at the higher levels. So if you'd like to hear that, also let me know. But otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.